today is the third day. Now it's 2 p.m. and uh, I've only been riding 40 kilometers. I actually didn't start that late today, but during the way I was at a bike shop and meeting one of my friends. Um, now at 2 p.m. I'm in Cannes, France. Just lying somewhere near the beach in the shadow. Let me give you a look of that. Now start from here. I'm gonna ride 134 km more to Valenzuela, with about 2,000 meters of climbing, which is super super difficult. Today I'm prepared to ride in the evening. So time wasn't really a big issue for me. That's why I'm still here this late. And as today, the third day, the hot feet issue is really getting worse and worse. The first 20k, it felt like uh, there's a needle inside of my shoes. And during every pedal stroke, you can feel the pain. And while climbing this high mountain, I have plenty of time of thinking about where I should sleep tonight. So today I was meeting my friend who has lived in this area for a really long time. She told me that on these mountains near Vansol, there are wolves and wild boars. Well, now I'm regretting. After the first 500 meters, it was on average 6%. That is fine. But what I didn't thought of was that on the mountain, it's just pure heat, pure sunlight, and without even a tiny little bit of the wind. Okay, I am on top of the first hill, and uh, this is what happened. The rear derailleur just got completely broken. So what, ha what happened back then was, the train was on the big ring of this and also had a big cock over there and this train is not long enough to do that so actually this has happened I think three or four times during this trip but normally the train just gonna and normally the train just stuck there so I will back pedal a little bit and change to the right gear but since today I'm on the mountain and I was pedaling pretty hard so when that happened just it all crashed Actually, at the first time it happened, I was thinking if this happens again and there was enough force of it, I think the train is going to be broken. But I didn't realize that the train is perfectly fine, but the rear derailleur is just so fragile. And in the last hours, I was just sitting here and calling the back shops. And I think I did eight or nine back shops. Most of them don't, either don't speak English or they don't have the part. So I called the Decathlon in Friedrichs, which is my next little stop. And there's a guy who speaks perfect English. They don't have the part, but that guy told me I have to call someone else in the Friedrichs. And I googled that shop and it looks super, super professional. Now I just called him, he says he has the part. And even if it doesn't fit, he will have a solution for me. Now I'm super happy and uh, just one more thing to worry about which is do a hitchhike and trying to get to that shop. It's in the evening of the third day. Now it's getting more and more embarrassing to do this daily walk. During the first day I got really I got my hope really high and thinking I can do this 1200 km ride in about 14 days without any problem. I think the last time I did over 100k, it was about a year ago, and during this whole year, I barely trained for anything. But what surprised me is that during this time, the physical strength is the least of the problem. So after my rear trailer and the hammer all broken, I was waiting for the hitchhike, and there was a nice, nice French guy who picked me up and drove me to Fedris. To the, to the bike shop, I contacted while I was waiting there. So I got really lucky because it turns out they were a Cannondale dealer. And for something that I didn't know is there's a part between the derailleur and your bike frame. So that part is called hunger and that hunger is different on basically every bike. If a bike shop is not a certified Cannondale dealer, they normally wouldn't have that part that, that part I need. Got lucky this time, I saw the Cannondale bags in the shop. So I checked the price of the derailleur, which is I think 32 euros on Beagle. 
and I was expecting 70, 80 euros in total, but then the guy told me it could be around 120, but the fixed price, but they are going to but they are going to tell me the fixed price tomorrow when the bike is fixed. Mm, I don't know if that's a ripoff or not. I have been riding for five years, but this is the first time I repair my bike in a bike shop. Normally I just watch a bunch of YouTube videos and uh, buy the tools, then try to repair them by myself, which worked out perfectly in the last five years. But anyway, even if it's a ripoff, sometimes I feel like when you are in a really bad situation, like today, like the, there's a heat, there's humid and there's the nauseous by getting a hitchhike taking you down hills for 30 minutes the money is like the only thing that the only thing that you don't care about anymore but on the other hand even if it's even with so many problems i'm not so disappointed in some way first of all it's a new experience and i always like new experience good or bad even though this this new experience cost me a lot of money but if we look at the bright side if nothing has ever happened and I didn't learn something like like the train is too short or I have to bring a spare hammer next time that I'm doing a long trip, without knowing all this and trying to do the Paris Press to Paris next year, the problem is going to be way worse. And another thing I want to add is there's something I noticed while I was doing the Ironman last year. Ironman is kind of a niche sport, even though with every race you have more than 2,000 people attending. But, but compared to other sports like running a marathon or playing football, there's really not so many people doing the Ironman. So last year when I was in, also in France doing the race, I feel like everyone is super nice to each other. You just, even though you have never met and sometimes you don't speak the same language, but, but everyone treats each other like a family. The same with the endurance bike riding. So after the bike broken today, I was asking the solutions on the Facebook group of the race called Transcontinental. Everyone was being super helpful and there were people sharing my post asking around the cyclists who are living around this area. I just want to say thank you to all, to all you people in the Facebook group who helped. So what's next? In the bike shop, the guy told me I can pick up the bike tomorrow at 10 a.m. And... Uh, so it's actually pretty late. Basically, I think I will be out of town at 12 o'clock. And from here to Valenzuela, it's... 100 kilometers and 1,800 meters of climbing. On Google, it says I need around seven and a half hours. I'm not sure if they cock me. I'm not sure if they have considered the elevation, but I'm thinking of seven to ten hours. So after all, it wasn't so bad. I mean, I paid 200 euro more and was and I'm, and I'm one day behind the schedule, which is not really behind the schedule. I have already foreseen this when I decided to stay in Nice yesterday. So I'm still I think if nothing really if nothing really bad happened, I'm still be able to get to Barcelona in time. So endurance cycling it's really I knew it I knew it was difficult but it's just I feel like now it has to be a has to be a lifestyle in order to get used to it and getting through that weeks, months, or sometimes even years of cycling non-stop. And now thinking about the last big trip I took three years ago, it was from Milan to Florence, then from Rome to... and then from Rome to Naples, and then riding about 200 kilometers in Sicily. So it was in total a little bit over 1,000 kilometers, but I did that in a span of one month. What I did was riding one day, arriving in a sort of big city, touristy city, which a lot of people speak English and you can get everything you want and stay there for two more days, getting a little bit of rest and visiting the city and just doing the sightseeing. So for me, that trip, it was perfect. I never got any issue with my bike. I didn't even have a puncture. But, well, as people say, no pain, no gain, and if everything is perfect, you can't learn anything. So, I hope this trip is going to be the trip where I learn a lot of things in order to make less and less mistakes in the future. And also, as people say, practice makes perfect. And without doing this, I would never imagine when, I'm, when I thought I'm prepared for everything, there's always something more to hit you. So during the last trip, the worst issue was the numb finger and the hot feet. And this time I got the solution for that. I got a, I got a really tall I got a really tall tri bar and I'm not pedaling that hard. But this time what I learned is not being able to shower is really, really, really horrible. So right now I'm still not sure what what is the solution of this. So what I can do now is 
maybe just try to sleep with all the sweat on your body and uh, just get used to it. Or in the future, make sure that I will have hotels or camping place or hostels, I mean, anywhere where I can take a shower ready before doing that trip.